guys, what's going on? It's G, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Can Why are you laughing already? <laughs> I've done it four <laughs> times already. <laughs> Can't talk Expose much for <laughs> shush, shush, shush. No one needs to know. We're invested in the story, okay? Yeah. Um, so we're on the last chapter. It's all going down. Yes. Emmeline is going to the throne room with a knife to give to Rod because the only way to break Rod's curse is to if it's for him to kill his beloved. And Alex doesn't know how to stop him. Things are going down and things are happening and okay, we're starting. Okay. <clears throat> I stop in my tracks when I see Sir Mithras standing just in front of the main door to the throne room. He looks at me expectantly as I approach. Go Sir away. Sir Mithras? Good evening, your highness. Such a lovely night tonight, isn't it? Only half an hour left before you will turn 18. Oh, heck. Uh. Uh. Do not forget our deal, princess. Come midnight, I will be requesting your aid in exchange for helping the prince break his curse. I clench my hands into f tight fists. Helping the prince break his curse? Rod killing someone is not what I wanted. Sir Mithras puts a finger to his lips. You wouldn't want to attract the attention of the knights, would you? There would be quite a bit of explaining to do then. I glare at him, then take a deep breath and lower my voice. You did not tell me that breaking Rod's curse meant killing someone. Oh, but I am only honoring my end of the deal. Perhaps you should have done your research before agreeing. Wow. The grin on his lips never wavers, but I can see the amusement in his eyes. I rely entirely on—I relied entirely on the story Emmeline told me, and that was my biggest mistake. I should have read the full fairy tale. But now it seems you finally know the full story of the prince's fairy tale. Hmm. Yeah, no kidding. To break his curse, Prince Rod must kill his beloved with the knife his sister has brought him, just like in the fairy tale. Sir Mithros, is, Sir Mithros continues to smile at me. I realize that he is speaking slowly, like one might speak to a child. So condescending. No. Wait. I start to realize that Sir Mithras is purposely drawing out this conversation to stall me. I need to go. Sir Mithras does not stop me when I slide past him to open the doors to the throne room. The first thing I see when I enter the throne room is Rod. He's standing in the middle of the area with Emmeline in his arms. Is... is she alright? Rod gently places Emmeline on the throne. He leans down to look more closely at her sleeping face, then reaches down to take the object in her hand before he faces me. Wait, does he have to kill me? No. Cool. <laughs> I can see the metallic glimmer in his hands. I know that he's holding the knife Emmeline brought with her. Sorry. <laughs> this is not I me. read it and I was like, huh. Yeah, yeah I feel that. <laughs> Where did she even get this knife? He pauses to stare at it, then turns suddenly, eyes widened at some sight in another part of the room. I follow his gaze to the corner of the room, where Viorica floats in midair. Her eyes are closed and her hands clasped, as if she, ju as if she just is just sleeping. Viorica, but how? Such a pleasant surprise, isn't it? Sir Mithras walks into the room with his hands clasped behind his back. You! Good evening, your highness. I done messed up everything. Is this your doing? Sir Mithros just smiles at him pleasantly. Rod only glares back at him. Guards! Sir Mithros licks his tongue and chuckles. <laughs> My apologies, your highness, but no one will be able to hear you no matter how loud you shout. Not even your witch friend will hear anything through my magic. He knows Dolores is here. I glance around the room and notice that Sir Mithras has created his silent green barrier. This is the same magic he used yesterday. Now let us get back to the matter at hand. You are running out of time, Prince Rod. It would be a shame to see you perish here after the princess went through the trouble of asking me to save your life. Had to bring that up. Had to bring that up. Alex, what is he talking about? Well, you see, um, <laughs> I... The princess didn't want you to die, so she asked me to help break your curse. Sir Mithras spreads his arms, gesturing towards both Emmeline and Viarka. And so I have been kind enough to set the stage and gather its actors for what I hope to be a wonderful finale. I can't help but wonder how this fairy tale will end. Why would you do this, Alex? Because I was dumb and didn't read the rest of the story. I didn't know that it meant killing Viarka, I swear. That's why I came here, to stop you. Ooh. 
Mm. I told you so many times there is nothing you could do to help me, and yet you still ref refuse to listen to me. Because I refuse to let you die. Can you not see that you're important to me, Rod? Oh. Yikes. Ellipses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, what a scan. Shut up, Mithros. <laughs> Alex. I turned to Simrithros and stared daggers at him. I asked you to help Rod. Why did you have to involve Emmeline in this? It was a necessary requirement that the princess be the one to give him the knife, your highness. It was, after all, the mermaid's sister that brought her the knife to kill her beloved. So that's not how she knew all of this. She came here crying and begging me to break my curse because she didn't want me to die. I almost wanted to do it. But I could never kill someone. That is why I always refuse to break my curse, even if... Even if I really want to live. Oh, Bean. Hmm, perhaps I miscalculated. Oh well, this can be remedied. Thermithros waves his hands, his fingers begin to glow subtly with magic. Oh no. What are you... <coughs> Rod! <laughs> A faint green glow surrounds Rod as he doubles over. What are you doing to him? What I should have done to begin with. The witch who cursed him said that he must do this of his own accord. But seeing as he refuses, I am going to have to bend the rules slightly. Thanks. Rod stands abruptly and begins walking towards Viarka. The knife in his, his hands eyes. Yeah, <laughs> glistening beneath the patches of scattered moonlight in the room. Princess, he's going to kill Viarka. Stop this, Sir Mithros. Where's Delora when you need her? I run towards Rod and wrap my arms around his waist in an attempt to stop him. But whether through magic or his own strength, he continues onward. I end up being dragged behind him. <laughs> Rod, snap out of it! Rod! I must... kill her. His gaze is so glassy and his words so mechanical that he sounds nothing like himself. No! Sir Mithros, stop this! I'm ending our deal! My apologies, your highness, but I- but not even I can dispel my magic once it has been casted. It will only fade of its own volition, once what we needs to be done has transpired. That, or perhaps in the most unlikely circumstances, the prince will simply shake the spell himself. Just kiss him. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> Bet. Oh, me. <laughs> 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 My bad. Through mis- Through- the dead though, Mithros' words are apologetic. His expression is anything but. In fact, he looks amused by it all. Uh. I have no idea who this is. Not, not so fast. So fast. <laughs> all three of us go. Dolores! It's Dolores! A crimson ball of light rushes towards Mithros. He waves his hands through the air and is barely able to conjure a shield to protect himself from Dolores' magic. Dolores! Hey. It wasn't exactly easy to find you all, especially with the silence you spell. Such a nuisance. That is not important. Help me stop Rod. Zoinks. <laughs> Rod slowly Bravo. appears beneath Rod's feet. It spreads up to his legs, freezing him in place. You know, you know that works. I sigh with relief as I collapse onto the floor. My arms are sore with the effort from trying to hold Rod back. Mithros clicks his tongues as he faces Delora. I don't believe you were invited to play the to display, traitor. Magic. All the magic. <laughs> Light gathers around Mithros's hands. Moments later, he releases the energy towards her. The lore, in turn, conjures a barrier, successfully protecting herself from Mithros's magic. I always did fancy myself a party crasher. <laughs> the lore is great. Still, to think that you were alive this whole time. Oh. Myth. Myth? His real name. He is one of the tambourine barrier yeah, yeah, barriers. Yeah. <laughs> barrier servants. This person was my mother's servant? Allow me to correct you. I am her only faithful servant. I am nothing like that ungrateful bastard who betrayed her to the fairies. Who is he talking about? Hello? I know who he's talking about. Well, whatever it is you're planning, forget about it. There's no way we're letting you get away with this. Oh, well, do try your best. But first, a reminder. I am the superior witch here. 
Energy crackles in the air as sparks begin to form around his hand. This spell is taking longer than the other spells. I notice Dolores worry moments before she's able to cast a shield on herself. This is not good. Mithros releases the bolts of lightning in Dolores' direction. The impact causes both the shield and the ground to shudder. Dolora! The smoke clears and miraculously, Dolora stands unharmed. No sooner has a sigh escaped my lips than another frightening sound echoes across the room. There's a loud crack and I realize that it is coming from Dolores' shield. E everything after that happens in a blur. Blur? <laughs> blur. blur. <laughs> Dolora is still trying to hold the shield up when Mithros casts another spell at it. It shatters and the magic seeps through and hits her directly. Dolora! Really now, have you forgotten the most important lesson in defense magic? Always conjure another shield after being hit by a powerful spell. Or, oh, I do apologize. Perhaps I did not give you enough time to cast another shield? How thoughtless of me. Delora lays on the floor, unmoving. Delora! I'm about to rush to her side when Mithros moves to stand in front of me with a malicious grin on his face. It will do you no good to be in denial, princess. How could you? How could you hurt another witch? It is not a crime to destroy a traitor. He looks back at Dolora with clear disdain. Then he sets his eyes back on me and raises his eyebrows. It is foolish of you to try to stop this. You wanted this, and I will not allow you to re- Word. Rage on our deal. The prince will break his curse, and you will help me. Help you? Yes, I went to great pains to make sure Alcasta kept you safe just so you could pay me. You said that you made a deal with Alcaster to bar the knight's assistance. And what would I need the knight's assistance for, dear princess? I never needed the knights. I just needed Alcaster to keep you safe. I would have gotten rid of him myself if I wasn't sure the king would eventually find me. So this whole time you... We're only trying to keep me safe. To use me? Use is such a simple, Ill, ugly word. Remember, I just want to help you to help me. <gasps> Princess. Bean. I turn around and realize that Dolores' spell on Rod has faded and that I is only a few feet away from Yorica. Rod! I force myself to run towards him as fast as I can manage. I will not let you kill anyone. I do not know what I must do to stop him, so the first thing that so I do the first thing that comes to mind. I put myself between Rod and Fiorca, just as I, just as he is about to plunge the knife into her. Princess. Oh. Ooh. My body is racked with pain the moment the blade sinks into my shoulder. Ugh. I collapse to the floor and hold my injured shoulder. I can feel the blood. I can feel my blood seeping between my fingers. You fool! You could have been easily killed. I do not care. I. I love Rod, and I would never let him do something that he would regret for the rest of his life. Aww. I cringe. <laughs> I cringe. Tears cloud my vision as the pain worsens. Alex. I feel Rod's arms around me as he cradles me to his chest. I look up to see that his eyes are fixed on my bleeding shoulder. Rod looks at me with anguish. He grabs a handkerchief from his pocket and presses it to my shoulder. I can't believe I did this. I know, like sorry, he was gonna. A, hanger, a handkerchief is so small. Like... <laughs> we will talk about that. I stare. In, ooh, I stare in shock as his lips move, but not it. But it's not Sebi speaking, but him. <gasps> your voice. You broke your curse. But how? A bright light envelops us, and for a few mo moments, I have to close my eyes against its brightness. I reach out to grab my necklace, but it is gone. I open my eyes in panic, but the necklace is definitely not there. Alex, the, the glass slippers. I glance down to see a pair of smooth glass slippers at, on my feet. Hey! Look at those! They exist hey. now. Oh. <laughs> you, you broke your curse by breaking mine. I hear the sound of shattering glass and turn to see Mithros staring at a broken vial. What is that? Ross has begun to form at his feet and is now spreading up his legs. Uh, what, what is, is happening? <laughs> what Delora. is happening? Always have a backup, as they say. Seems like you're not the only one to forget the basics of combat. Nice. Never turn your back on an opponent unless you are sure they are dead. Yikes. 
Your bloated ego just wanders in turning the tide of battle. Dolora is now back on her feet and walking towards Mithros. She dusts off her dress as she moves. Dolora is unharmed? You, but how? Did you really think I was I'd forget to conjure another shield? The frost has now made its way up to Mithros' neck. Inconceivable! A lowly witch like you would never cast this powerful of a spell! Delora gestures at the glass shards on the floor. That's where Parfait's new special potion comes in handy. Makes my magic more powerful. The second most basic le lesson is to never underestimate your opponent. Looks like you were the terrible pupil. Mithros opens his mouth to speak, or perhaps to scream, but by the time he opens his mouth, the frost has completely devoured him, leaving him nothing oh. but an icy devour. That's the end of me. <laughs> but leaving an icy sculpture. Rip. Dolores, Alex is... Has her bleeding stopped? Conversation for yourself. I think so. <laughs> I can make out what the... I cannot make out what, what they say after that. My world starts spinning and everything starts to blur, so I close my eyes. I feel Dolores' hand on my forehead. The warmth relaxes me somewhat. We got you, princess. Hang in there, Alex. My body becomes heavier by the second as I lean my head against Rod's chest. And then I feel myself falling into never-ending darkness. Oh dear, this creepy room again. <laughs> <laughs> when I open uh, my eyes, it's yeah, it's creepy. When I open my eyes, the first thing I see are the soft rays of sunlight seeping through the window. I am in my own room. I tend to sit up and cringe when I feel a sharp pain in my shoulder. I reach out to touch it, only to realize that it has been neatly bandaged. Despite the injury, my body feels oddly light, stronger than it eh, stronger than it even was before. I remember I placed myself in front of Viarka to stop Rod from hurting her. But where did this energy come from? Oh, you're a witch! <laughs> the oh, door yeah. opens and Emily walks in with a tray of food in her hands. She stops when she realizes that I'm staring at her and nearly drops the tray in her rush to stand beside me. Alex, you're finally awake! I was so worried about you! Wait, she had food and she was bringing it to the princess and then it's like, Oh, you're awake! Uh, apparently they just awake. leave casual food by my bed while I'm sleeping. You know, <laughs> as you do. I'm, I'm so sorry. This was all my fault. How in the world was it your fault? What are you talking about? It was mine, not yours. I remember bringing the oh. knife to Rod, but... Oh. I can't remember much of what happened before or after that. Oh, you precious bean, I'm so sorry. Just that when I woke up in the throne room, I saw that you were bleeding in Rod's arms. I thought you were going to... The rest of Emmeline's world words break into pieces as she begins to cry. I'm so sorry. For forgetting about you. I mean, you work too hard while you're my personal maid, and- I shake my head with a sigh. It's not your fault I was cursed, Emmeline. What? I look at her tear-stained- I look at her tear-stained face. Oh, she, she's crying! I know, she was not at fault yet. She was not at fault yet? Here. Yet here- oh. <laughs> my bad. I thought that was end of sentence. I was like, okay. <laughs> she was not at fault, yet here she was crying. She- she- Yet here she is crying. There we go. <laughs> she really is a good person. I spread my arms. Alex? I turn away, suddenly embarrassed. You looked like you needed a hug. Emmeline stares at me for a few moments. I'm about to reconsider when I suddenly feel her arms around me. I am so happy. I hug her back and stroke her hair. I cannot help but smile at the warmth that spreads in my chest. Thank you. Out the shoulder. <laughs> Emily pulls back, her face full of concern. What? What will happen to you and Rod now? That is the question of the day, Emily. I saw how close the two of you got. And I saw how Rod looked at you last night. Wait, last night? So today is my birthday and the day I become the bear. Is that the real reason I feel strangely energized? Oh! Emmeline walks up to one of my dolls, my doll shelves, and picks up the doll she had placed there three, there months ago. Three months ago. Happy birthday! I meant to give this to you earlier as a surprise before you were cursed. Anyway, I know it's not as pretty as the other dolls from your collection, but I hope you like it. It, it's beautiful. Thank you. 
I take the doll in my arms as a knock sounds on the door. Rod, please, Rod, come in. <laughs> please. Yes! The door Jeez. opens and Rod steps inside. His eyes widen when he sees Emmeline. Em? Oh, I was just about to leave. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Emmeline slides off my bed and heads for the door. But before she closes it, she turns to us once again. I know how complicated this will be for the both of you, but I want you to know that I will support you. Oh, you bean. <laughs> so my lips are sealed. Emmeline winks before finally closing the door behind her. Hey. There's an awkward silence in the room before Rod approaches me and sits on the edge of the bed. How, how are you feeling? It still hurts, but I'll be fine. What's wrong? I'm just not used to hearing your voice from your own lips. What a sentence. <laughs> oh. But I see that you still have Sebi with you. I've grown too fond of him to completely set him aside. He's helped me through a lot. <laughs> Bummer, I can't read his thoughts anymore. Sebi, you gotta spill all of the tea. All <laughs> of the tea. There was never any need for you to do that in the first place. Hmm, is that so? Rod shakes his head and sighs silently. So, what happened last night? How is it you were able to break your curse? You didn't kill Viarka. In the original fairy tale, the letter Little Mermaid could retain her. You can do it! <laughs> you got this! You can do done. it! <laughs> <laughs> the Little Mermaid could retain her humanity only if the prince loved her back. Though it never happens in the fairy tale. It still is an element of her curse, but still, because of the prince, because the prince never fell in love with her, the only way for the mermaid to live was to kill him. I fell in love with you unknowingly, when you told me, wait, when you told me you loved me as well last night, that broke my curse. I feel my cheeks turn warm. Ron coughs. His own cheeks flushed. Oh, the awkwardness. So there you have it. The little maid never had a fairy tale ending, but I did. Oh! The little maid. <laughs> I never had to kill Viorca. But because my curse started with Viorca, I assumed it had to end with her too. Yikes. It turns out that the person I'd love just needed to love me back. I was mistaken. It never needed to be Viorca. I see. We stare at each other for a few moments, the awkward silence returning. I change the subject as quickly as I can. Let's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what became of Sir Mithras? Delora brought him back uh, to Par Lady Parfait. She's the one who will properly punish him. And what of Bjorka? Delora returned her to her home yesterday. She does not remember anything that happened. Everything is back how it was- Oh, everything is back to how it was then. You are back to being my stepbrother? This is awkward. I cannot help but feel crestfallen at this truth. Blood blood binds, but so do sibling bonds. Rod and I can never have what either of us want. I... don't want to forget these feelings I have for you, Alex. If I never had made that deal with the witch, then maybe we might actually- Wait, then maybe we might have actually been able to be together. But had you not been cursed, our paths never would have crossed. I reach for Rod's hands. He laces his fingers through mine with a small smile. I love you, Rod. I love you too. But Rod leans forward and kisses my cheek. <laughs> okay, Caleb. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> Okay, Caleb. Okay. One month later. Oh. Time skip. Ever since I broke my curse and became the new tambourine bearer, oh. I've, <laughs> I've been training under Parfait and Delora so that I can learn to control my newfound powers. I never wanted this responsibility, but it is a burden I was born into. It is necessary I help maintain the balance between light and dark that I have been missing for so long. Now that I'm the new tambourine bearer, <laughs> Parfait wants the two of us to work together in maintaining that peace. I do not wish to cause any pain or suffering to the people, especially uh, to the people whom I cherish. Yes, thank you. 
back in her princess outfit. Sometimes I still wonder what Sir Mithros wanted me to do for him, but that is not important anymore. Wait, if I failed, would I have done what he wanted? Yes. <gasps> Maybe. I still have much to learn, but right now, as the new bearer, my priority is to get rid of the, the fairy tale curse once and for all. For the time being, everyone in the merchant waits patiently for the day that I will lift well, that I will learn to lift their curses. Since everything transpired, my relationship with Ophelia and Emmeline has improved. Emmeline is fond of calling me the best sister, even though I'm the only one she has. My relationship with the king, however, has yet to be mended. I'm only doing my best to open up to him and to give him a chance, but the efforts are slow going. I do not ask why he acted the way he did in the past, but I know that in order to move forward, I must, I must let go of the past. It is finally time. I've been waiting for this all day. I head back to my room to change to change my dress into something less conspicuous. Afterwards, I head out into the town and into the forest for my designated meeting. <laughs> it's a relief that the king allows me to leave the palace on my own. I would not have been able to come here with guards. I guess me being a tambourine bearer puts him at ease. <laughs> if the title reassures him and allows me to come out here on my own to meet Rod, then I'm not complaining. Rod still uses the secret passages he had always used to sneak out of the palace. Emily knows about our secret meetings and helps to cover our disappearances if necessary. It makes me happy that Emily approves of our relationship, that we do not have to keep it secret from absolutely everyone. At first, Rod and I both attempted to keep our distance without making it seem too obvious to everyone around us. Though Ophelia seemed to suspect something is going on between the two of us, she has not asked questions. Emily was not happy with our decision. She said that she felt terrible that we would need, that we would be forced to let go of something so precious on the amount of our titles. She was right. More than that, it was difficult for the two of us to deny our feelings for each other. In the end, we came up with a solution, even if it is temporary. We decided to secretly meet up in the forest every once in a while so that we could be together without any pretenses. Even just for a little while. When I catch sight of Rod, I run towards him and throw my arms around his neck. I feel Rod snuggle his face into the crook of my neck. Yeah, I have this dance. <gasps> oh! I take Rod's hands and begin dancing in a began dancing to a silent song. The first time I danced with him, it was to prove a point. It was when neither of us liked each other, even liked each other. I remember this as I stare at him. What? Is there something on my face? I was just remembering how much he hated me back then, and now, here we are. Fate sure does- er, uh, sure loves to toy with us. I smile at Rod. Just for a little longer. I wanted to be by his side. I don't know how long we can keep this up, but every day, I wish for the same thing. I wish that I can live my life openly loving Rod. The end. I, have I a wonder, minute. would that dream ever be possible? Ah, I love you it. Did it. It's so you did it. Hey, oh, bye guys. If we don't leave, bye oh, yeah. guys. I love you. Caleb oh, no. might, Caleb might glitch out on us. I might oh, die. Caleb might die. Thank you so much for joining us, Caleb. <laughs> Wait, we can, we can do this. We can do this. That's the end of the story, and that's so happy. I love it. I told you he has a genuine smile at the end. He does. Also, why does he kind of look better outside of his prince uniform? What? I said nothing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are all so sweet. I okay. told you, it's a good, it's a sappy good game. It is. Oh. Everyone's always so skeptical of this route because he's technically our stepbrother, but yeah. the creators spin it, so it's such a good thing. They, they, they really did a good job of, like, not making it, like, crazy awkward. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, the ending is kind of sad, no. though. Oh. I am finishing this. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb literally <laughs> lagged out and came back. <laughs> just to finish this. Yeah. This is oh, too these cute. Are all the, these are all the things. Yeah. Oh. This is amazing. I can't. This is, like, a 30-minute video, but I really don't care. <laughs> Oh, hey! We love Initiative. <laughs> hey! Oh, they're so oh. cute. Sappy romance stuff. They're so cute. Oh, I can't. I can't. This Thank is great. all these people for creating this game. Thank you. This oh. round was amazing. I loved this round. <laughs> There, there are better. There are good. There are better ones. I'm telling no, you. No, I literally yeah. love it. Mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I can't. Rod this is, is great. Oh, I love Rod. 
Oh my Rod and Sebi. Oh my gosh, Rod and Sebi literally. <gasps> Wait, where was Sebi in the ending scene? <gasps> he was he probably there. somewhere. He was probably on the ground watching them. But like, off to He's the saying, side. Ah, uh, yeah. Aww, this yeah. is love. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ah, that's it. That's the end. Oh, we did it. That's Rod, Rod, Rod done. No. Also, by the way, next time you guys see us, we'll be doing this bad ending. <gasps> Oh. I'm so- I'm gonna cry at his bad ending. Look, there's a- Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh, my lights flickered. And your video. Oh, I'm so- But anyway, guys, we hope you guys enjoyed this video as well as the rest of Rod's Good Route because we certainly did. Literally could not stop at the end. It was so good. We... Sorry for the emotional trauma you'll experience in his bad version. I'm going to cry at his bad version, and I think Caleb yep. is too. I'm already <laughs> Caleb's crying, crying now. Literally. Because <laughs> we know what's going to happen, and I'm not looking forward to it. No. It will probably be like a very. It will probably like only be like a video in itself, like just when we get to that part. Yeah, it's just gonna. The bad endings are usually one vid long because you, you just skip yeah, to the bad ones. So we're gonna go ahead. The next video will be Rod's bad ending. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. it's gonna be his bad ending. I'm gonna cry. But for now, but... enjoy the what for this what it was. <laughs> but we're gonna enjoy the good ending because it was really sweet and really cute, and we we love it. But and any... we don't know what happened to Fritz. <laughs> Fritz is just gone. Oh, yeah. Fritz, to... Fritz kind of just like left. Also, Varg is vanished too. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, guys, we hope you guys enjoyed, because we all did, and stay sweet, and I hope to see you guys again in the next CP uh, episode, as well as the rest of the routes for all these characters. So stay sweet, and I'll see you later. Bye! Bye.